Hello, good evening once again and welcome to another live stream and another reading of one of the world's greatest short stories and this one is particularly short. It's just two and a half pages and so it obviously won't be a long stream this evening and I've just set it up so I don't imagine many people will get the notification in time but we'll see and so just a few words from me before we start. This is um, the story I'll be reading is by Yasunari Kawabata and it's called The Grasshopper and the Bell Cricket and I believe it's about a group of children looking around for insects um, someone finds one and there's a bit of um, indecision about what it should be called and there's a romantic sort of thread again it's only two and a half pages so I, I think that's particularly interesting as well sometimes when we think about writing if if people think about they want to write something often the first thought is that it's overwhelming because oh you know, I can't write a novel, I can't write a long book and all these things. But what I'll be interested to see, I've never read this story before, so it'll be new to me. But the fact that it's just two and a half pages long and it's considered a short story. And according to the compilers of this collection, it's one of the world's greatest short stories. So we'll see, won't we? <laughs> we can be the judge or you can be the judge. I'll say my own uh, few words at the end. Um, but yeah, I think it's interesting, a short story, the one at the end, I don't know how we're going to do that, but the uh, the last one is uh, called Borges and I by Jorge Louis Borges, or Borges, I believe it's Borges, it's just one page, it's that long, and so that's going to be a very short stream, um, but this evening, enough of me rambling on, I'm reading The Grasshopper and the Bell Cricket. By Yasunari Kawabata, Japan, 1924. Walking along the tile-roofed wall of the university, I turned aside and approached the upper school. Behind the whiteboard fence of the school playground, from a dusky clump of bushes under the black cherry trees, an insect's voice could be heard. Walking more slowly and listening to that voice, and feeling reluctant to part with it, I turned right so as not to leave the playground behind. When I turned to the left, the fence gave way to an embankment planted with orange trees. At the corner I exclaimed with surprise. My eyes gleaming at what they saw, up ahead I hurried forward with short steps. <clears throat> At the base of the embankment was a bobbing cluster of beautiful, vari-coloured lanterns, such as one might see at a festival in a remote country village. Without going any farther, I knew that it was a group of children on an insect chase among the bushes of the embankment. There were about twenty lanterns. Not only were there crimson, pink, indigo, green, purple and yellow lanterns, but one lantern glowed with five colours at once. There were even some little red store-bought lanterns, but most of the lanterns were beautiful square ones that the children had made themselves with love and care. The bobbin lanterns, the coming together of children on this lonely slope, surely it was a scene from a fairy tale. One of the neighbourhood children had heard an insect sing on this slope one night. Buying a red lantern, he had come back the next night to find the insect. The night after that there was another child, this new child could not buy a lantern. Cutting out the back and front of a small carton and papering it, he placed the candle on the bottom and fastened the string to the top. The number of children grew to five and then to seven. They learned how to colour the paper that they stretched over the windows of the cut-out cartons and to draw pictures on it. Then these wise child artists, cutting out round, three-cornered and lozenge-leaf shapes in the cartons, colouring each little window a different colour with circles and diamonds, red and green, made a single and whole decorative pattern. The child with the red lantern discarded it as, tasteless, as a tasteless object that could be bought at a store. The child who made his own lantern threw it away because the design was too simple. The pattern of light that one had had in hand the night before was unsatisfying the morning after. Each day with cardboard, paper, brush, scissors, penknife and glue, the children made new lanterns out of their hearts and minds. Look at my lantern. Be the most unusually beautiful. 
and each night they had gone out on their insect hunts. These were the twenty children and their beautiful lanterns that I now saw before me. Hey Joe, how are you? Hope you're well. Wide-eyed, I loitered near them. Not only did the square lanterns have old-fashioned patterns and flower shapes, but the names of the children who had made them were cut in square letters of the syllabary. Of the syllabary. Different from the painted over red lanterns, others, made of thick cut-out cardboard, had their designs drawn onto the paper windows, so that the candle's light seemed to emanate from the form and colour of the design itself. The lanterns brought out the shadows of the bushes like dark light. The children crouched eagerly on the slope wherever they heard an insect's voice. Does anyone want a grasshopper? A boy who had been peering into a bush about thirty feet away from the other children suddenly straightened up and shouted, Yes, give it to me. Six or seven children came running up. Crowding behind the boy who had found the grasshopper, they peered into the bush. Brushing away their outstretched hands and spreading out his arms, the boy stood as if guarding the bush where the insect was. Waving the lantern in his right hand, he called again to the other children. Does anyone want a grasshopper? A grasshopper? I do, I do. Four or five more children came running up. It seemed you could not catch a more precious insect than a grasshopper. The boy called out a third time. Does anyone want a grasshopper? Two or three more children came over. Yes, I want it. It was a girl, who just now had come up behind the boy who discovered the insect. Lightly turning his body, the boy gracefully bent forward, shifting the lantern to his left hand. He reached his right hand into the bush. It's a grasshopper. Yes, I'd like to have it. The boy stood up, as if to say, here. He thrust out his fist that held the insect at the girl. She, slipping her left wrist under the string of her lantern, and closed the boy's fist with both hands. The boy qu quietly opened his fist. The insect was transferred to between the girl's thumb and index finger. Oh, it's not a grasshopper, it's a bell cricket. The girl's eyes shone as she looked at the small brown insect. It's a bell cricket, it's a bell cricket, the children echoed in an envious chorus. It's a bell cricket, it's a bell cricket. Glancing with her bright, intelligent eyes at the boy who had given her the cricket, the girl opened the little insect cage hanging at her side and released the cricket in it. It's a bell cricket. Oh, it's a bell cricket, the boy who'd captured it muttered. Holding the insect cage close to his eye, he looked inside it. By the light of his beautiful, many-coloured lantern, also held up at eye level, he glanced at the girl's face. Oh, I thought... I felt slightly jealous of the boy and sheepish. How silly of me not to have understood his actions until now. Then I caught my breath in surprise. Look, it was something on the girl's breast that neither the boy who had given her the cricket, nor she who had accepted it, nor the children who were looking at them noticed. In the faint greenish light that fell on the girl's breast was the name Fujio, clearly discernible. The boy's lantern, which was held up alongside the girl's insect cage, inscribed his name, cut out in the green papered aperture, onto her white cotton kimono. The girl's lantern, which dangled loosely from her wrist, did not project its pattern so clearly, but still one could make out, in a trembling patch of red on the boy's waist, the name Kyoko. The chance interplay of red and green, if it was chance or play, neither Fujio nor Kyoko knew about. Even if they remembered forever that Fujio had given her the cricket and that Kyoko had accepted it, not even in dreams would Fujio ever know that his name had been written in green on Kyoko's breast or that Kyoko's name had been inscribed in red on his waist. Nor would Kyoko ever know that Fujio's name had been inscribed in green on her breast or that her own name had been written on Fujio's waist. Fujio. Even when you have become a young man, laugh with pleasure, pleasure at a girl's delight when, told that it's a grasshopper, she is given a bell cricket. Laugh with affection at a girl's chagrin when, told that it's a bell cricket, she is given a grasshopper. Even if you have the wit to look by yourself in a bush away from the other children, there are not many bell crickets in the world. Probably you will find a girl like a grasshopper whom you think is a bell cricket. 
and finally to your clouded, wounded heart, even a true bell cricket will seem like a grasshopper. Should that day come when it seems to you that the world is only full of grasshoppers, I will think it a pity that you have no way to remember tonight's play of light, when your name was written in green by your beautiful lantern on a girl's breast. The End So, a very short and simple story. Is it one of the world's greatest short stories? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. You guys let me know in the comments what you thought of it. Especially those literature critics among you. Tell me what you think. Um, yeah, I'm not sure really. It's, I, I prefer the longer, more intense, science fiction-y type short stories of H.G. Wells. So, yeah, that was a bit poetic for me. Enjoyed it nonetheless and interesting to work my way through it. Maybe my taste isn't up to the, the scratch of the world's greatest short stories. But hey, there we go. So that was that. Like I say, very short story at the beginning. I gave a little preamble, didn't I? And so, yeah, let me know in the, in the um, comments, guys, if you think it's um, worthy of being one of the world's greatest short stories or what you think about it and just the fact that it's only two and a half pages I find very interesting so yeah that's that tomorrow evening in search of the miraculous chapter one so try and make that if you can tomorrow night at eight I'm very excited for it and uh, it's gonna give me lots of opportunity to create lots of other videos commenting and expanding on the concepts in each chapter so I'm looking forward to creating a lot more content you know, not streaming but you know creating it and uploading but that's all for this evening guys enjoy the rest of your evening and your day on Thursday and I hope that you'll be able to join me for In Search of the Miraculous Chapter 1 but for now good night take care and I'll see you soon bye guys <laughs>